Welcome to 13.2. In 13.1, we talked about the evolution of plants. What we're going to look at in this section are four types of modern plants. And what they mean by modern plants, the plants that are still around today. Because we've lost some plants. Animals go extinct all the time. So do plants. So what we're going to look here is we're going to look at modern first non-vascular plants. Then we're going to give an overview of living vascular plants. And we're going to look at the classification and evolution of seed plants. We did that a little bit in 13.1. And then we're going to summarize the adaptations and evolution of flowering plants. Remember, flowering plants, the most successful type of plant on our planet. Almost 260,000 different species. So first, let's look at the characteristics of non-vascular plants. Another name for non-vascular are bryophytes. Well, first of all, they're small. They don't have any vascular tissue. They also d uh, lack true leaves, seeds, and flowers. Instead of roots, they have these things. These are rhizoids that come out and anchor them to the ground or absorb water and minerals. That's their point. That's their main uh, structure uh, to bring in things into the plant. They occupy niches in moist habitats, and they are not very efficient at absorbing water. The three types of bryophytes or non-vascular plants that are still around today, we mentioned these before, are liverwort, hornwort, and mosses. And uh, these are modern bryophytes, and uh, liverworts are named for their liver-shaped leaves. Uh, hornworts are named for their horn-like sporophytes, these things coming out right here. And many of us have seen mosses on the floor of forests. We've mentioned this a number of times without showing you a diagram. Well, vascular plants, known as tracheophytes, which literally means tube plants, uh, the earliest vascular plants quickly came to dominate terrestrial ecosystem. And terrestrial, that means land ecosystems. Why were they so successful? Well, because they had an efficient way of moving water and nutrients through the plant. So for example, the xylem vessel here, this is inside a plant, like in a stem or a leaf, is moving materials up, whereas over here, the phloem moves it in two directions. Xylem can just move it in one direction. Notice it says one way only, waters and minerals, no end uh, walls between the cells. That's here. However, different Phloem can move it in two directions. They have end walls with perforations, that's these over here, and they have companion cells. So they're very different. Uh, xylem is a little simpler, phloem a little more complicated, but this is, these are the tubes, the two types of tubes that are in vascular plants. So when did vascular plants evolve? Well, Vascular plants evolved about 420 years ago, just after the Cambrian explosion, and they have probably evolved from moss-like bryophyte ancestors. Now, keep in mind, the vascular plants had true roots. They also evolved stems of vascular tissue and lignin. Make sure you know what lignin is. And vascular plants evolved leaves to collect sunlight and make photosynthesis more efficient. These are major adaptations for vascular plants. So besides having those tubes inside them, the xylem and phloem, which made vascular plants so much better than non-vascular plants, they also evolved seed. And seed plants are called spermatophytes. And the evolution of seeds by vascular plants was a really big deal. It was really, really probably one of the most important evolution of vascular tissues. Seeds solve the problem of releasing offspring into a dry world. Because once seeds evolve, vascular seed plants and their descendants diversified into terrestrial niches everywhere. Today, vascular seed plants dominate the earth. And remember, flowering plants are part of that. So in this picture, we have one picture of moss and then we have all these different ferns and what the uh, book is asking is why do these ferns look more plant-like well if we look at them we can see that they have leaves and they're vascular okay that's the big difference moss doesn't have any xylem and phloem doesn't have any tubing doesn't have any internal tubes so let's take a look at a typical plant seed here's an avocado and the avocado contains an embryo, which uh, these three parts right down here, here's the embryo, which has the seed coat and endosperm. And notice that there's the fruit of the avocado around it. 
Another thing that plants did, vascular seed plants, is they figured out a way to get seeds far away where the plants had a better chance to grow. So for example, dandelion seeds are at the bottom of each of these little parachutes that take off when the wind hits them. And in here are seeds from maple tree, and these flutter down like little uh, spinners and can land farther away from the maple tree. And these things, burdock seeds, burdock seeds stick to the fur, of animals. So the animals carry them further away from the plant. So the, all three of these are really interesting adaptations to move seeds away from the plants and disperse them so they find a better place to grow. We talked about this in the last section. Remember, gymnosperms are like pine cones and a seed develops on the scale of a cone. So this is what a gymnosperm, pine cone. The angiosperm, on the other hand, the seed develops inside the ovary and here's the ovary wall and this whole structure is the ovary. So angiosperms or flowering seed plants form seeds in the ovary and as they develop the ovaries may develop into fruit. They'll, that fruit and flowers attract pollinators, the fruits encourage animals to disperse and eat the seeds. Very important is we're going to take a look at the parts of a flower. So I'm going to pronounce these and then we're going to look at the diagram. The stamen is the male reproductive part of the flower. The pistil is the female reproductive part of the flower. And the sepals protect the developing flower while it's still in bud. So let's take a look at a diagram. This is from your text. This is 1321. And right here, right here is the pistil or the female part of the flower and the embryo is down here and this is where the seed will develop if over here the male part of the flower which is called the stamen but the top part the anther is where the pollen comes from if the pollen from right here goes into this um, top of the pistil here and travels down and hits one of the eggs it will fertilize and become a seed and then eventually some flowering plants will have build a fruit around this. Here's the sepal. So let's review this. The pistil is the female part of the plant and down here is where the seeds will develop if the egg is fertilized by some of the pollen that comes off of the male part of the flower. This is also the female part is also called the ovary. Flowering plants um, were thought to have evolved at least 200 million years ago, but we don't have any fossil evidence until about 125 million years ago. So the fossil flowers have male and female reproductives, but no petals or sepals. Scientists think that the earliest flowers attracted insect and other animals and spread pollen from flower to flower. This greatly increased the efficiency of fertilization over wind spread pollen. So make sure that you read this section about the evolution of flowering plants and why they were so important. Remember, flowering plants became our most successful plants. Some of the most uh, recent angiosperm to evolve are grasses. Humans started domesticating grasses such as wheat about 10,000 years ago. So human beings started to domesticate wheat just as they started to domestic, uh, domesticate animals as well. So let's take a look at this. The plant on the left is called teosint right here. This is teosint and it's the ancestor of modern corn which is shown on the right. This is an intermediary. Now how can I say that we know about this? Well we know about this from the fossil evidence of plants. Plants leave lots of fossils especially the more recent ones. So People around the world rely on domestic plants like rice, like wheat, like corn. Those are three of the big ones. So let's take a look at some of the groups of living angiosperms. Um, first, and these are according to the structure of the flower. Um, monocots are like grasses and orchids. Eudicots like daisies and peas and magnolids like magnolias and avocados. So real quick, non-vascular plants are called bryophytes. Make sure you know what is typically of them. And vascular plants, tracheophytes, and they have xylem and phloem and why they were so important. Most vascular plants are seed plants and they produce seeds and pollen. And most modern seed plants are angiosperms that produce seeds in the ovary of flowers. And remember, flowering plants, the most successful. This is the lesson summary, but on this next page, 
I have a link in the presentation, but in the YouTube video, I'll also have a, uh, a link just at the end of the video. I'll also have a card on here that'll have a link. You can also Google the amazing way plants defend themselves, Ted Ed, and this will get you to this animation. I'd like you to watch this. It's just amazing. The chemical ways. Remember, plants can't move. They can't move the way animals can. So how, the, how can they defend themselves? There's some really, really clever ways, clever adaptations that plants have evolved over the last hundreds of millions of years. Good luck on the quiz on chapter 13, and uh, we'll see you soon.